All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Alison Edgar, MBE, who is in Bath in the UK. How are you doing, Alison? Top of the world, absolutely top of the world at the moment. Thanks, John. Yeah, and just uh, and this is uh, of interest to people to understand what an MBE is that Alison was awarded. It's a member of the British Empire. It's awarded by the Queen, um, and as we were talking before we came on air, only a small percentage of these are ever handed out to business people. So Alison was awarded hers in in twenty twenty as recognition for her long term work with entrepreneurs and business, uh, and. Uh, you're also the author of a of a Amazon best-selling book, Secret of Successful Sales. Uh, but congratulations! You're the first to the first MBE we've ever had on this podcast. Oh well, it's my honour to be on. So um, you know, I'm so excited. I love it when somebody asks me to be on as a guest. So thank you so much. Of course, of course. And what we're going to talk about: smash it, the art of getting what you want. Everything in life is a sale. So as you can see behind uh, behind Alison, you have that big smash it. So um, do you want to start off by what do you by just uh, baselining? What do you mean by smash it? So you know, again, it's got different connotations in the US to what it has in the UK. <laughs> so I should probably clarify that. So um, I think the term originally comes from tennis, doesn't it? You know, you mm-hmm. smash yeah. it. You know, you win it. You go for it. You really uh, you succeed is what I sort of define it as. And then the sort of subtitle to the book is um, the art of getting what you want. And I think that's that's really what smash it is. It's it's really just getting what you want in every stage of your life obviously in sales that's really important but you know part of the reason people are good at sales is they've got their priorities correct and the balance you know in their life so smashing it could be you know um they get to the gym three days a week or they lose 50 pounds or you know whatever it is it's 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 a, it's a self um it's a self target isn't it yeah. And I think one of the interesting things is, I, and I think this is where a lot of people struggle, is that they don't really know what they want. So, I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to, you know, smash it when you don't know what it is you're, you're trying to smash, right? Oh, completely. I mean, it, well, one of the statistics that I talk about in the book is, according to Inc. magazine, only 8% of people hit their goals and why is that? Well, I think quite a lot of people don't set goals. You know, they, they might have thoughts and their ideas of what they want, but they don't actually like write them down or have a vision board or, you know, and to me, I'm dyslexic. So for me, the visualization is really important and not in a manifestation kind of way, but on the days where you don't feel like smashing it, you know, that things don't, especially in sales, you know, we've all had those days where you think, oh, it's all gone to hell. I'm never going to be able to hit my target or do whatever that actually it's actually looking at that thing that, you know, the new car that they want, you want the house that you want, the vacation you want, actually having that written down. And again, you know, the other thing I talk about in the book, which it's tried and tested, and it's one of the oldest things in business is the SMART objective. You know, is it specific? Is it measurable? Is it achievable? You know, all those kind of things which we would use in business, but people don't actually translate that into their lives. And that's where, you know, if you look at the time framed part of that, you know, for me to I get an MBE from the Queen, I mean, that that was always on my goal board. That's not something you can achieve yourself. It's right. through the actions of giving that you get that. But, you know, the time frame was on there. I really wanted it within like five years and it happened. So I think that's part of the reason people don't set goals and they expect things to happen just like magic wands, don't they? But they do. Uh, and I think the other part, too, is sometimes people set and it's and it's set goals and big goals. And that's fine. It's it's great to set big goals. But then they they kind of forget the part that there's you have to put one step and you have to put one foot in front of the other in order to get to that goal. And I think people get discouraged because they set these huge goals and then they kind of get intimidated by them or they suddenly realize, okay, this is going to take maybe longer than I expected or there's more involved or and they back off. And I think that's, I think that disconnect between the big goal and the small incremental steps is something that uh, people struggle with. 
Oh, completely. Because I think the other thing with that is that to be able to smash it, you need to have a growth mindset. That is non-negotiable. You need to make the mistakes. You need to learn from them. You need to get up every day and, and bring your A game. And whether your A game is getting out of your pyjamas or climbing a mountain, it's just that that continual process of sitting in a growth mindset. And I think if people set two big goals, they then move into growth mindset and they become, you know, you see this in sales teams all the time, don't you? Oh, it's all right for them. They get the good leads. Oh, it's all mm. right for them. They've got the good patch. Oh, they're really lucky. And actually it's not that. And again, those people are sitting in the state of a fixed mindset and you never smash your goals if you're sitting in fixed mindset. You've got to be in growth. Yeah, well, we are as humans, we're fantastic, aren't we, at finding a ton of excuses why things aren't aren't going our way. We're not so great at looking, you know, looking in the mirror and saying, well, actually, maybe maybe a lot of it rests with with myself. Uh, but that's a good point is the the growth mindset. So talk a little bit more about mindset, because I know people kind of intellectually get it and they hear mindset. Oh, you got up the right mindset. But they've it's people sometimes struggle with actually making, you know, in, in fixing their mindset or getting the right mindset or getting into gear. And again, this is where I find it really interesting, John, when it comes to sales, because this is what I talk about in the book. So I split the mm -hmm. book into two sections, the me thing and the we thing, not like the Scottish we thing, but the you and I <laughs> thing. So the thing that we would think of as the traditional sale when, when somebody else is involved. But yep. what people don't analyze is actually you have to sell to yourself every day, you know, and it's that focusing on why you're doing what you're doing. Because, again, if you take let's take fitness, for example, or, you know, or anything, one more cold call because your head's going, don't do it. You might get rejected. This might be awful. Spoke to that guy before. He was a wee bit snappy with me. Did all that. So your head's going, don't do it. And I think that's where it really comes back to our brain is trying to protect us. So again, like even if it's fitness, oh, don't bother going running. You know, you know, you might be out in that main road. You might get wet. You might hurt yourself. You might. So you know, it's it's something that we can't help. To be fair, it's um, you know that making those changes to do things differently is how you smash it. And you know, I talk in the book about metathesiophobia, which is the fear of change. And a lot mm. of people have got a fear of change. So what I did was I created the smash it method for trying to sell to yourself to trying to sell to your brain to make you do things that you wouldn't normally do and it's based on the sales process that we use like in in my first book secrets of successful sales yep. i sort of tailored that to the smash it method to help people to overcome that fear or move into the growth mindset which is completely necessary to be able to smash it yeah, it's interesting. Uh, the the fear of change is inter is interesting, and it is a powerful fear that afflicts a lot of people, and probably all of us to some degrees. Uh, but it also is counter to counter to life because life is full of change, and life is full of unexpected change. But it seems like sometimes when we get into a work situation, we try to control everything and make everything so it stays the same, so we have something to rely on, as opposed to, as you say. Um, not embracing change and saying this is great because if I stay within these confines, I'm never going to grow. And I think a lot of that can, you know, I'm not, I, I haven't studied psychology, but I think when I was writing this book, I feel like I discovered the meaning of life. And I think a lot of that um, obstinance, what we call it, it comes from um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You know, a lot of people, especially in sales, you know, they're worried if I lose my job, then I'll lose my house. I won't be able to pay my mortgage. I won't be able to feed my kids. Oh, no, I don't want to make that change because if I just keep doing it the way that I've always done it, you know, if I bash out the cold calls or do whatever, then, you know, I'll, I'll be safe. It's that safe. Like our, we're trying to keep ourselves in there. And I think that's where we we really to, to, to create your maximum, you know, your best hashtag best life. You've got to go out of your comfort zone. You, it, that's a sort of non-negotiable. But that's where, again, you have to convince yourself to do that. Because mindset to me, and again, being able to, to go out of your comfort zone isn't something that someone can give you as a gift. It's not like a birthday gift. There you go. I've given you that. It's got to come from between your ears and you've got to work on it every single day and and and, and focus on it. And if, if not, you just sort of slip into bad habits. And I think that's a great, a great point is that nobody can give it to you, that you have to do it yourself. And 
And sometimes I think we live in this really kind of strange world today where you have this pervasive culture of everything being easy and simple and handed to you and all of that and social media. And so people get into this weird situation where they expect everything to be handed to them. They expect everything to be easy. And then they and it's not. And then they look at all these other people on social media or whatever, and they think, well, they're all being successful. So why aren't I? And so this idea of kind of bringing it back to yourself is almost counter culture today. Yeah, I mean, it's comparison theory. And I think and a lot of the times it's a good thing, but a lot of times it's not. So let's look at the sales leaderboard. Let's go back to mm-hmm. like old school where you, know, yeah. you had your, your performance league and there would be somebody at the top and somebody at the bottom, people in the middle. And sometimes, again, that competitive edge, right, I want to be the winner, I want to not. And I tell you, like, the name Jason McWilliams is still there because Jason McWilliams and I used to tie for the top salesperson. <laughs> and it was that kind of drive to be the winner that made me, you know, one more call, one more sale, just keep going, you know, move into Accelerator, all that stuff. But again, if you look at that now, especially the way that a lot of the younger salespeople, a lot of the younger generation, they've been brought up on social media and they look at it. And again, I think that, you know, it's not a good comparison or, you know, I want to be thinner. I want to make more money and have a Lamborghini. I want to do that. So I think it's, you know, it's again, having the conversation with your brain, right? Is comparison a good thing or a bad thing? Am I using it in a force for good or am I using it against myself to self-sabotage and say it's all right for them or, you know, they get it lucky. And I think that's where it's having that internal conversation is what helps you to, to, to move forward. No, absolutely. And and I think also, let's face it, I mean, people have been through a tough time with the uh, with the pandemic, etc. And it's it's. It's been a time where I think a lot of people have questioned themselves. Maybe maybe it's a, a time when some people have done self-reflection that they haven't had time to do before. Uh, but I think a lot of people are also, you know, they feel like everything is out of their control. And, and in sales, this is this is it can be particularly hard because maybe you're in an industry that are selling into an industry that's been devastated or or you know, it's harder to sell your products right now because you know people are reluctant to buy. So you have to dig a little deeper. Um, so what what would you say to people who are feeling like that, who are feeling like a little overwhelmed and and like things are out of control? I think you said such an important phrase there, John. Like they're focusing on things that are out of their control. That is the maximum thing. Every single time they feel that anxiety, that overwhelm. And again, the pandemic has really, you know, it, it's it's spread like wildfire, hasn't it? And it's like, oh, but what happens if this happens? What happens if that happens? What? Stop doing that. You know, can you control it? That's again, have the conversation with your head when you start to feel it. Can I control this or not? No, you can't control it. Okay, what can I control? Well, I can, I can control on every day turning up from work on time. I can turn up and making sure that I've prepared for those calls. I can prepare for having good open questions with a customer. I can control and trying to get to the need. I can control and delivering the benefits and I can control and trying to close. And again, looking at my pipeline going through, you know, let's have a look at my pipeline. Let's put it in order of probability. Right. And having that conversation, where are you in your thought process? How likely are you to make sure that we, you know, we make this deal happen within the next two weeks? On a scale of one to five, if one means not at all, five means you're ready to order today. Where are you in that thought process? Then work on your probability. Make sure you're starting good conversations on LinkedIn. Make sure your CRM, make sure your notes are up to date. You know, these are the fundamental things that every single salesperson can control, but they're too busy worrying about other things. Stop it. Just control what you can control. And, and you raise a fantastic point here about fundamentals, and I, I totally agree. Um, and I think that's always a place to go back to when you, as you said, when, when you're feeling overwhelmed or out of control is go back to the fundamentals and say, OK, as you said, am I doing all of the things that I should be doing to the best of my ability because I can do them? As you said, these are within our con- within our control. And and sort of push aside the rest of the stuff. I'm I'm a huge believer in going back to fundamentals. And I think often with salespeople, especially even uh, experienced salespeople, sometimes it's human nature 
the longer we do things, sometimes we start to forget the fundamentals. Sometimes we, we, we're improvising. We're not doing all the things that we should be. And if we take a step back, we realize that. For sure. I mean, you're, we're not, you know, what I see is people not managing their time properly. So that's the first thing, not preparing, not planning properly, winging it, you know, and that's where we, that's not how you, well, hopefully that's not how you were taught to sell. You were taught to, you know, make sure the planning was up to date, make sure you were speaking to the decision maker, you know, all of those kind of fundamental things that people haven't been doing. And I think that's where, you know, and again, you know, coming back to time, you know, work smarter, don't work harder. And, you know, I talk about people ask me how they manage time and like based on the Eisenhower quadrant. So there's urgent, important, not important, not urgent. John, I didn't get that. Like I'm not the most academic. I've got to work with things I find easy to work with. So I've transferred everything into basketballs, tennis balls, ping pong balls. And that's how I manage my time based on Alison Edgar's big balls. And this is where, again, looking at pipeline management, but when you get to the end of quarter and you've not hit your target, those clients are basketballs, but to the client, they're not bothered about placing it this month. They can do it next month. It's a ping pong ball. And that's where, again, the disparity of the balls, that people move into pushy sales, don't they? Because they're trying to hit their target, but actually it's a ping pong ball to the client. So I think having a full understanding of you know that that time management and that communication is imperative yeah i mean i totally agree because uh i hear all the time you know people say well i'm busier than i've ever been i'm overwhelmed i can't do anything and i always say are you though really or are you more distracted than you've ever been because let's face it we have so many things to distract us and and maybe yeah maybe a lot of sales people are selling virtually for the first time and maybe that's a little weird or awkward for them and it's very easy to let yourself get distracted so coming back to what you were saying about time management it, it's critical that you start to look at okay am i really dedicating all the time i have to these fundamentals or to the things i should be doing or am i letting a lot of other stuff kind of get in the way yeah, and I think there's two things there. That So there's things that, again, you can control and things you can't control. So I think during the last 18 months, I've seen a lot of time that people will be having bitching sessions with their colleagues, right? So that time has been in the fixed mindset space, like, oh, oh, they should be bringing our targets down. Oh, you know, we should be getting a rebate in our tax. Oh, we should be doing that. Can you control those things? No, you can't, but you're spending your time in that area. Then there's things that you can control, which become a wee bit difficult during the pandemic. It's, you know, people working from home and they've had no childcare provisions or they've been looking after their parents or they've, you know, they've been in a bereavement situation. You know, let's not kid ourselves. People have lost yeah. loved ones here. And that's a difficult, you know, that, that, that those are two different scenarios. You can't control that kind of stuff that's going on, but you need to be involved in that. But if you look at, you know, I think one of the things that it has given us is flexibility. So even if you've got your child care situation, you know, maybe you could then get up earlier and do all the prep work then do the stuff when the kids are there and then finish earlier. So it's not that you should be working longer hours. It's just being smarter and thinking outside the box. And, you know, that's examples of uh, I've seen people not do that and then just saying, oh, it's not fair. I've got kids. I can't do it that way. Whereas you know, you still have to bring, you know, I'm not saying you have to bring in your quotas. Hopefully some organisations have been flexible on targets as well. But again, I think it's staying in that positive mindset that, OK, I can't do it the way that I've always done it. But what can I do to work smarter, not harder and, and do my best? Because, you know, there's situations like let's look at hospitality and events and, you know, they, that, they, they can, you can't control that. You can't have a thousand people in a room that you used to have. What can you do instead? Well, you could be building um, a pipeline on LinkedIn, bringing that across into the CRM, starting to transfer that data across to look for things that are, are ready to rock and roll as soon as they can have that space. Yeah. And, and it's, an, it's an interesting point that, that you raise as well there is because, um, I think the other thing, uh, the thing that you pointed out there is uh, have a plan, right? Come up with a plan. So maybe it's not, I, maybe your situation isn't ideal, but if you're, if you're smart, you can come up with a way of figuring out and then just go, go talk to your manager or your company and just say, here's my situation now I'm at home or whatever. Here's my situation, but here's the solution that I've come up for it or come up um, to deal with it. 
And you're probably fine. Most people will be absolutely fine with that. And they will welcome your your proactivity as, a, as opposed to having to chase after you and go, what's going on with you? Yeah, but I think also sales managers, like it's been interesting. This is one of the things that I've seen the shift that uh, like a lot of people move into sales management roles because they're good at sales right? and, yeah. and they get mm-hmm. promoted or they get whatever. Now, John, you and I know the fundamental of sales is ask good open questions, listen to the answer, go in further, really get to the needs, deliver the benefit, close, negotiate. We know mm-hmm. that that's, that's how you sell. But when it comes to sales management, they tend to not use that sales process. They, they tend to tell people, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. <laughs> they don't allow their team to talk to come up with that solution because maybe some people in the team haven't readily come up with a solution. But if they say, how does that affect it? What do you think we could do? How could we do that? Okay, so let me just confirm. You know, you can work Monday to Thursday. You need a Friday now because your child's doing this. You, what you want to do is you want to work longer hours those days, start at six, finish it, you know, whatever. And, and you feel that that's a good solution. How does that sound to you? OK, the benefit of that is your family will be happy. You'll still be doing your hours. You'll still hit your quota. Bish, bash, bosh, you've closed the sale. And that's where a lot of people, it's, I believe, you know, where we started this conversation, every single thing we do in our life is a sale. And if you follow the process, which again, the sales process, the smash it process, then you can smash it. And But people just don't do it. Yeah, yeah, no, and it's interesting you mentioned the sales management because it's it's let's face it, typically, as you said, uh, top sales people are made sales managers, and but they're never trained in the management part ever, pretty much. And oh, sometimes they may get some. Well, sometimes they may get some sales management, but I'm just saying overall kind of like management theory, it's rare that you actually see people and, and management is management at the end of the day, the fundamentals of management. And then you and then obviously there's layers on top of it. But I do feel that that's the point, because then they approach everything the same way they approach selling. Yeah. And I think, again, you know, top performance salespeople sit in the growth mindset, don't they? And again, mm. It's trying to convince that person, like we said earlier, you can't give mindset as a gift. You've got to convince that person to move from a fixed mindset into a growth mindset. How do you do that? You ask them good open questions. It's the same. Mm -hmm. And and I know I make it sound really simple, but actually when you follow the process, it is simple. Yeah, but, you know, the temptation, obviously, is unfortunately a lot of people who get promoted into sales management then because of the pressure now that's coming from above on numbers that they just end up trying to become super closers. You know, the people who parachute yeah. in at the end, parachute in and elbow you aside and say, oh, I'll, I'll help you. Just watch what I do. But it's funny, isn't it? Because, you know, the people that can't sell or struggle with sales is because they sell too soon. And it's the same with management. They try and close too soon on what they want rather than, you know, getting in there and, and following the process. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, listen, this has been this has been fantastic, Alison. The, the book is called Smash It, The Art of Getting What You Want. All of Alison's information is going to be below this video and links to the book and links to her website. But before we go, Alison, do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. So, yeah, I'm Alison Edgar, MBE. So I have got a sales training company. I speak at events. My clients include Discovery Channel, Sky, European Commission. I've got two books, Secrets of Successful Sales and uh, Smash It, The Art of Getting What You Want, which are both available on Amazon or any of the main retailers. I have also, I've got a secret, nobody really knows this. This week, I have been filming a new TV show for Amazon Prime for the UK and the US. It's a business show, um, and I've been on there as a mentor, so can't mention the title. Uh-huh. It's all quite heavily NDAs, but I can say, watch this space January 2022 if you want to see a bit of more of Alison Edgar MBE on your screens. Oh, well, congratulations. That's fantastic. Well done. Um, so I, we, we definitely look out for that, and we will certainly link to that when it when it comes up. Uh, again, my name is John Golden. Thank you for listening and watching. Thank you, Alison, for, for taking part today. And I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.